We're grilling up some fish today on the Cooking Everything Outdoors show. Gary House, the Outdoor Cook, Cooking Everything Outdoors show. I hope you try this at home. Swordfish steaks with a spicy yogurt sauce. Absolutely delicious. And it's really easy to make. I'm gonna show you how to prepare this in just a few easy steps. What I have here are three fresh swordfish steaks. I have some extra virgin olive oil, some herbs de Provence, some coarse uh, kosher salt, and some fresh ground uh, black pepper. And actually I'm using the rainbow blend on mine. So I just wanna drizzle a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna take my Herbs de Provence and just give it a light sprinkle on there. I'll take a little bit of my coarse salt, and some of my rainbow peppercorns, fresh ground here. Okay, now I just wanna take some clingy stuff here. So let's seal this up. And then this needs to go in your fridge or your ice chest for another hour. So while our swordfish is chilling, uh, we'll, I wanna prepare the yogurt sauce. Now, keep in mind that this original recipe is supposed to be pureed in a blender and I'm not gonna do that. So mine's gonna come out a little bit rustic. What we're gonna need for our recipe is one cup of yogurt. Uh, this is whole yogurt, it is plain about a third of a cup of loosely packed, uh, excuse me, a quarter cup of loosely packed mint leaves, about a third of a cup loosely packed cilantro. My cilantro got a little beat up by the sun, so yours is gonna look a lot more vibrant than mine. Uh, but these are fresh, I just clipped them out of my herb box. A piece of garlic and, uh, excuse me, two garlic cloves and a piece of ginger. And when I get done trimming the ginger up, it's gonna be about the size of these two garlic pieces. And that's what I'm looking for as far as ratio. And then one small jalapeno pepper, which I've already cored and seeded. So our task here is going to be mincing this up as fine as possible. And what I do is I'll just roll this up as best I can. And then with a very, very sharp knife, and the larger the pieces, the more color you're going to get in your recipe. So that looks pretty good on my mint. And we'll take a look at my sad little cilantro. Again, I just want to roll that up. And then I'll do that with the garlic and the ginger and the pepper. So here I'm just about done with my final minces. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll get this all together. And then we'll need half of this, so about one cup, which is about half this container, right about there. A little bit of salt, good pinch or so in there. Okay, let's give this a taste. Nobody's looking. Oh, that is some really good flavor already. I think just a tad more salt. And now what I wanna do is I wanna put this in the fridge to stay chilled until we're ready to plate up our swordfish steaks. 
So to accompany our grilled swordfish, we're going to be having kale with apple and bacon. And this is going to be sautéed on the island grill stone. It goes together really quick and it's quite flavorful. If you don't have an island grill stone, well, go order one. Uh, and if that doesn't arrive in time, then you can use a cast iron skillet. So to get started, uh, the island grill stone has been preheating for about 15 minutes, uh, maybe close to 20 minutes. It's really hot in there and I'm going to be frying up some bacon on the stone. And I'm just going to take uh, three slices of bacon, uh, three or four is perfect. And actually let's talk about the other ingredients real, real quick. Um, one apple, which we will be slicing. I chose a, a Granny Smith apple. You can use whatever you like. I just wanted a little bit more tartness. You'll need one medium sized onion, you know, a bunch of kale, and some salt and pepper, and a tablespoon of cider vinegar. And these are just in bite size pieces. And these are going to go right on the grill stone. And what I want to do is take advantage of the greases that will be released from the bacon to be cooking and sauteing our kale and apple and onion in. This will cook up pretty darn quick. So onions just in rings. So there's our onion rings. And I'm going to do the same thing with the apple. And that should get us through the process and hopefully these won't brown up too much. If you had a little bowl of water handy, you could soak them in there with a little bit of acid. And we're just about there. And I want to start preparing my uh, kale. And uh, kale, if you haven't had this before, you really need to start because it's, it's a superfood. Uh, I just, basically what I do is I take the leaves off the stalk. Okay. So those are ready to start working with. I got to get that bacon off right now. And then we'll shred up our kale. Now there's a lot of grease on the island grill stone right now. And I don't need that much. It's actually um, more than I need. So I just take a paper towel and absorb some of that grease up. Now there's a little bit in the center there. I'm going to go with that because that's going to help with my, um, my onions and my apple. So I'm going to get my onions on there. I'm going to get those going first, and then I'm going to put the apple on. Just before I put the apples in, I want to start shredding up my kale. What I'm looking for is just little bite-sized pieces like that. So now I want to add my apples in there. Look at those. I, I want them soft, tender if you will. But I still want a little bit of bite to it. The onions and apple are just about where I want them, so I want to pull those off. Look at that. Look at that. That's what I'm looking for. So now I want to take my kale and I want to put that on the island grill stone. It's going to overflow, there's going to be a lot on there, but as it cooks, it's going to wilt down. Going to hit this lightly with some olive oil. And that's about it. Let's cook this down a bit. I'm going to put my swordfish steaks on next. I want to add my salt and some fresh pepper. I'm going to keep moving this. I don't want any one piece to dry out. Another minute or two, but while that's going, I'm going to add my swordfish steaks. 
probably about two minutes um, each side. I'm going to get some nice grill marks on there. And we'll, ch oh, I can smell it already. Check back in just a minute. So my kale is ready to pull. It's wilted down to where I want it. It's not so it's limp and lifeless, but it's still got some texture to it. It's got a little bit of crispness, which I think is going to add some wonderful contrast to it. So I'm going to get that plated up. You can see our steaks are just coming along beautifully. So I have my apples and onions. Get those plated out beautifully. Look at that. Now I want to take my kale and pull that. Now, I want to take my bacon, which I've crumbled up. Take my cider vinegar, and I'm going to drizzle that. And there you have it. That is our kale, onions, apple, and bacon. Now I got to flip my fish. That's what I'm looking for. Now this is not going to take but a minute more on this side. Time to pull a swordfish. Wow. Good. Tender still. A little firm. You have obviously the option of cooking your fish till they're done, which is white all the way through. Uh, with swordfish, you can go in at medium and have a little bit of pink. Uh, I prefer mine to be cooked done, just in case anybody was wondering. So that's where I'm at on these things. We are done. So we've made our grilled uh, swordfish with our spicy yogurt sauce. Let me get that out. Made our kale, bacon, apple uh, saute, and that's ready. Now we'll just put it all together. And I want to get a good selection of this yumminess here. My plate. Like that, take one of these beautiful swordfish steaks, and right there, and then take my delicious yogurt sauce. And I want some of that right there. And that, my friends, is how we put it together. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cooking Everything Outdoors show. But without my sponsors, none of this would be possible. Camp Chef at OutdoorCooking.com and Island Grill Stone at IslandGrillStone.com. They make all of this possible, and they're great companies, and they've got super good product and really good customer service. So please take a minute and go visit them, say thank you, and buy something. If you want to find out more about me, you can visit me on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, and of course, cooking-outdoors.com, where I'm always cooking up something new. This is Gary House, and I will see you when I see you. Mm -hmm.